So they actually did get him on TRICARE insurance also. So how it went is uh, my husband's insurance first and then Medicaid kicked in. Eventually, we, we a lot of people gave us horror stories, stories about getting him on Medicaid. You'll have to mm-hmm. apply several times before it goes through. It went right through. Wow. So he had my husband's insurance, Medicaid, and then TRICARE last. Yeah. Everything. He didn't. No out of pocket oh, at all. Yeah. I mean, I didn't pay like anything for that between whole. Between all of them yeah. getting together, and and it's just how it came together. Yeah, it's you, you just you lucky. did pay. Oh yeah, you did <laughs> just pay. in a yeah. different in a different <laughs> for way. For sure, for yeah. sure. So I guess what I'm thinking uh, throughout all this, because you think, okay, he was two days before his birthday. Mm-hmm. All these insurance things fell into place. Early on, you start seeing little miracles. Little um, and some big ones, <laughs> mm-hmm. and people that oh, I had a thought that I should do this. I had, you know, to help us to help him, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, the money is the least of it. Yeah, yeah. it was huge. It was huge mm-hmm. to have that done. But but the uh, the people and the way things just worked out, the the nurses and the doctors, I felt like every one of them was was just there for you and they were the best possible case. So, so anyway, I was saying how two, two days later on your birthday, we were there all day and then we headed home and we hadn't been home a half an hour and they called and said, Shane's going into emergency surgery. His nurse who's mm-hmm. there 24 hours a day. I mean, they yeah, check on him so often. Me. He came in sure. and he said, he noticed one of Shane's um, eyes was dilated just a little bit more mm-hmm. than it had been the last time mm-hmm. he looked at it. I mean, that's a pretty, insignificant change yeah you, think, you would think so yeah he instantly calls the <laughs> but team. he knew he enough knew the to, signs, you yeah know? so he calls in the doctors and they come in and they said his you know tested his uh pressures in his brain and he said his pressures are too high they told me at the time how how high they were and they're very high took him into surgery and took out that big piece of bone that his doctor had just spent all broken hours up, yeah. putting together. Wow. So took out a bigger piece with all the broken pieces. And then, and then of course they removed that and, and they put it in a bone bank and somewhere back East yeah. and they save it mm. until it's time to put it in. They said mm. a minimum of three months, let the brain uh, calm down and, and uh, swelling go down. Mm. So we were there that night for, you know, we hurried back up and, and waited for, him to come out of surgery uh, again, and uh, he come out that night, and that night was even worse for me than the first night, because I thought, you know, that's a huge setback to me, mm-hmm. and that's uh, that was my lowest um, lowest point in the whole thing mm. um, when they brought him back in that night. So um, was out there, stayed there with him for a little while. He was out, you know, he was staples in his head again you know more and uh just he just looked terrible and uh but luckily she had the feeling that she should take a picture and that like to be able to look back at those pictures that she took during that time helps me so much to know where i'm where i came came from from. yeah for sure yeah that's 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 true. The very first time I went in the room on, on the first day, I took pictures, and I thought at the time, oh, this is a terrible thing to have pictures of. Why would I want pictures of this? And my only thought was, my thought wasn't anything about anything going bad. I never thought that. Mm-hmm. I'm an optimist, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Cockeyed optimist. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my thought was, Shane's going to want to see these pictures as he mm-hmm. progresses, and I want to see the progression, and I want to... Pictures just mean a lot more to me than words, you know. So um, that's something that we've always done is documented with pictures. And and so it's funny that you say that. So looking at Shane, how bad he looked, his eye was droopy and his, you know, just bruises and cuts. And um, so I brought a picture of him, the best picture I've ever, one of my very favorite pictures of Shane. So I brought it to the hospital (laughs) Mm -hmm. and put it on the wall. It's my favorite Mm -hmm. tube. But but for a different reason. Yeah, the whole the <laughs> down here <laughs> actual picture is 
a lot better because I'm holding an elk skull. An elk. That's yeah. what it, look, it looks like. Yeah. It looks, <laughs> and blood. You look pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you think that's just pure happiness yeah. in yeah. that yeah. picture? So anyway, I put printed that picture and I put it on the wall in his room and I just wrote, this is Shane. This is my son, Shane. Please take good, good care of him. I wanted the nurses to see the the person that you really are, the light. Yeah. Don't you see the light in that yeah. face? Yeah. The light in his face, the light of his life, you know, is is mm-hmm. in that picture to me. So that's why I, um, I loved it. And and as the pictures went by, you know, that light started coming back in. But, you know, the light was always there. And I think that the nurses and the doctors started to, to see that and right away. His personality mm-hmm. started to come out right mm-hmm. away. There's a couple of, well, I was reading through some of the things. One of them pretty early when they finally took out his uh, breathing tube and he could start drinking uh, juice and whatever, Mm -hmm. ice. He loved ice. And he started learning a couple of words like yes and no or (laughs) Mm -hmm. no and yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So anyway, I remember one of them I read said McKenna, one of the grand, I don't know if my grandkids was in there and. And uh, Keith said, Shane learned to say yes if he wants some, or more, if he wants more ice. Shane's learned to say more. And so he said immediately as soon as he heard Keith say that, he sat up and he said, more. <laughs> and so she, McKenna gives him more ice. And and uh, so that was awesome. The kids, yeah. uh, as soon as they could start coming, they were there to help. And mm-hmm. the hospital, another awesome thing was that they would include whoever was there. Us, oh yeah, me, in the therapy and, and stuff. In yeah, the therapy, oh, okay. help yeah. him, help him do his therapy, and and uh, include the family in the whole. But um, I guess that what I I will talk about the clip, even if you don't use that, you can cut this part out. Okay. But um, in his speech therapy, his speech therapist told us that she didn't know. You know, she does an evaluation and a few mm-hmm. a few visits. She said to us. I don't know yet what he has. You know, there's names for all these things. And and she said, I don't know if it's this or this. If it's the one, he won't speak again. I mean, he will say yeah and no, but he won't be able to communicate like he -hmm. he should. And one of the things that uh, I, I talked about how Shane's brothers and sisters are there for him, Emily, his sister, brought an iPad for yeah, him. She that, thought, well, that'll give him that something to do, so an much. iPad. So mm-hmm. she had looked up some speech apps, and there was one that they found that she found that was, they they write a word, I think, and then they say it, and mm-hmm. then they have had you can a hear recording. It back, you yeah. could record yourself saying it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she left her iPad with Shane, and I didn't know until later, but he said, after everyone left, he just got on that thing and just yeah. stayed on that app and mm-hmm. set, kept trying to say these words and say them over and over and well, over. Well, I think the reason why I did that was because I wanted to be working on something, and yeah. that that That's was the you could do. yeah that was something that you, I could. You do, said yes. in your first in the first um, interview, you said that you would set goals for yourself. Yeah. And and I feel like that's really important for everybody. Yeah. We've mentioned that multiple times mm-hmm. on this show. But that's that's one thing. You set goals for yourself and you yeah, you obviously yeah. proved the uh that lady wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Luckily. She, I don't think she was being, you know, negative. She's just telling mm-hmm. us the oh, honest yeah. thing. She, she doesn't want to she surprise was awesome. us. But I in a way kinda of think that that might push you a little bit yeah. and say, Well, I'm going to do everything I can. Yeah, to, well, it seems like, like it's in said, his nature to yeah. do yeah. that. To, to yeah. prove people wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be like, nope, that's not going to happen. not going to accept yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah, so I bet it wasn't two days after Emily left the iPad. Hmm. She goes into, he goes into speech therapy and I was there and, and she's, and he's, you know, obviously I say he's talking. He's saying words that she can understand. She shows him a picture and he can say what the picture is. Yeah. You know, he's not yeah. talking exactly perfect, but she can understand what he's saying so she said as soon as that as soon as he's you know that session was over she said he will he will speak <laughs> he will yeah. talk he will yeah. talk he's he's, he's made he's made months of progress in two yeah. days wow. and, and he, i i put that all the credit for that all on my sister her that um, she thought of that yeah thinking yeah. outside the box what yeah. can i do to help yeah that's, that's right awesome and so I, I guess part of 
my thought through everything is if you have a thought to do something for somebody, just do it. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Don't keep yeah. thinking about it. Um, There's a reason you don't know, why you have that. You don't know what it's going to help a lot of times. And a lot of times mm-hmm. you don't know if it does anything. But Emily had well, that thought. She yeah, followed through Yeah, might as well it. do it. Yep. Yeah, what even harm, if it what doesn't, going to be yeah, like? even right. if it doesn't help him, like, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, you do. You get a lot of little thoughts throughout the day, and I guess if you spent your whole day doing everything you, that popped into your brain, maybe you wouldn't <laughs> be very efficient. But some things kind right. of just come back, and some things you know which ones you know which those ones are. you need yeah. to listen to. And I think when you start doing that, you get more. Yeah, you do. You get more in tune to to those things, and mm-hmm. and so. Another one that I think of is Christina, his other sister, started that a Facebook yeah. group, uh, Support for Shane. So many people were calling us, Keith mm-hmm. and I, and her, and all of them, or texting, and it got to where, not that you want to be rude, I would answer every text anybody sent me. Sure. Some of Shane's friends that were questionable mm-hmm. were texting about him. You know, they care genuinely yeah, sure. they about him. Know, yeah. And I would answer all of them, and, and Keith would say, why are you answering him? He's such a low life or, you know, you know, I, I don't care. I don't know mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things, who's going to help Shane and who's not. I can't, well, I maybe can't be negative to help. anyone. What if I could help them? Yeah. That's right. You know what I mean? That's yep. right. So you don't know. And I, so I said, I can't, that's be, true. I can't be negative to anyone. I can't uh, ignore them. So she started a Facebook group and that was awesome. Um, we would, we would post and she would post every day, almost, uh, how he was doing that day, what little progress he made. It was huge. Mm-hmm. It was for people. One lady wrote, I can't wait to get up in the morning and read what Shane has done the day oh, before. That's awesome. She said, it starts my day on a, on a positive note. That's great. So thinking of a, a positive note, another thing a lot of people asked us was, so what did you do to the people that hurt him? What's going to happen? Are you, have they mm-hmm. caught him? Have they? And our answer was always the same from the very first day. Mm-hmm. We don't care. It's not worth expending any negative energy to even think about them. They'll You're get, not in the business of revenge. It's yeah. not, it's not going to help him for us to have any negative. We've got to have yeah. positive only for Shane. And so from the yeah. very beginning, that's, that was our thing. And I, nothing ever did come of it as far as I know, because they would have yeah, let us know. Yeah. Nothing went, you know, but they you will know, receive they, they, theirs. That's right. Oh, yeah. Things come back around. I mean, they always do. Yeah. So, um, and another thing, I'm kind of jumping around, but there's a lot of things that happened. And uh, one of the things that I remember is Shane had a, a house. He had just signed a new lease. Yeah. He, I uh, just moved into this new house. And I, I don't know. Don't even, even think I paid my first month's yeah. rent. I don't even I know think if it was completely yeah. I don't think mm. you were even done unpacking, but you were getting there. So we needed to wrap that up. We need to tie mm. up a lot of loose ends, bank accounts. Um, Sure. You know, a couple of my, a couple of weeks later, I got a thing in the mail. It was a ticket that he had got in Salem for running the stop sign. And I <laughs> mm-hmm. had to go pay a ticket. I mean, there, you got to you got to kind of put in a little bit of a pause on life. Yeah, you do. And there's a lot of loose ends and things that I had to take care of. And mm-hmm. and so we were busy doing that as well as visiting him every day. You know, forty five minutes up, forty five minutes back. We didn't miss. I didn't miss a day. Keith took some time off from work, and uh, you know. A, family medical leave and Mm -hmm. then knowing him and and how he is his most the way he felt he could help most is get back to work yeah support the family and that's what my dad thinks of support Uh, the family that you know he's he's the dad he's got that on his shoulders sure and so uh he works shift work um days and nights and so he has weird days off so he'd be up there a lot and and he'd be up there every day that he could but but i went up every day some days twice a day but anyway, we went to clean Shane's house out the first time we went, and uh, we go into his bedroom, and on the floor is a loaded gun with a with a round jammed in it. Wow. Shane was going to take that with him to this fight, wow. but a bullet jammed in it. Yeah. And so he just threw it on the floor and left. Now, what would have happened different if he had taken that gun? Nothing good. Nothing good. If he because killed the kid, killed the kid, or it could jail. have been used on or him. If yeah, he turned on and him, that's the then, and, yeah, that's the other thing so, is you don't come back from a gun. Like so, you don't, yeah. that was the first, not the first, but one of many things that I saw that I said 
as soon as I saw it on the floor, I said, I know this is what happened. Then later when Shane, wow. you know, months later even, I asked him and he said, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's pretty intense. Well, yeah. That gun's never jammed, he said. Yeah. Never. Well, it was just a double feed or something like that, uh-huh. but, but you were in it was a, a simple, simple fix, but mm-hmm. yeah. The state you were in, you were in a 